We think we have found a more efficient and effective method for providing professional development using flipped classroom strategies. When I was a high school teacher, I spent a lot of time in professional development sessions and workshops. Some of it was mandatory, some voluntary, but most of it, I would say almost all of it, followed the same structure. So I've created simulated data for time spent in traditional professional development based upon my experience and maybe based upon yours as well. So this is a full day workshop and the first thing you should notice is that most of the time is spent on direct instruction. So you have a facilitator up front clicking through PowerPoint slides lecturing to the participants. Now I've, been, I've heard this called, this practice called a number of times for a number of people, I've heard it called death by PowerPoint, just sitting for hours and hours during a day long workshop listening to somebody talk click through PowerPoint slides. You'll also see there's some time for directions, some, the facilitator providing directions such as, oh, here's the agenda for the day, here's how, here's how we're going to transition to lunch, here's how we're going to transition to our breaks, so and non-content related items, just giving directions to the group. And then also some time spent on large group activities or discussions. For example, most of what I've seen is the facilitator will ask a question to the group or to the room and people will provide feedback and maybe ask questions themselves to the facilitator and the facilitator responds. So more of a dialogue uh, conversation rather than just straight lecture. But again, most of the time is spent on direct instruction and lecture. These are data that we collected in our recent professional development session at Rutgers University in New Jersey where we used a flipped classroom strategies to make our professional development more efficient and effective. So let me explain that. The first thing you're going to see is that there's actually some data, there's some time spent um, in this video category and that means that we showed videos in our professional development classroom. Uh, now we don't stand up and do live lecture. Everything that we meant to lecture or provide through direct instruction, we video ahead of time and then show those videos in the professional development classroom with the participants sitting there watching videos. So you'll, you'll also see that there is some direct, direct instruction and these are uh, short lectures or pieces of direct instruction that we didn't intend to say. Maybe they came up from a series of questions that we felt like, oh, okay, I need to do a 10-minute lecture on this concept, again, which we didn't plan to do ahead of time. Otherwise, we would have created a video to create efficiency. There are still directions. Now, you'll see that there's a lot of small group activity where we put participants in groups of three or four after they watch a video, we have them discuss a topic, an idea, and then share out to the large group. So most of our time is being spent in small group and large group activity where we're challenging participants to collaborate, share ideas, and then report out. The last, you'll, the last piece you'll see is that we have participants create artifacts and then review those artifacts in the classroom. Now, during the small and large group activities, will have participants come up with their own ideas, their own strategies, how it can apply to their classroom. And then every once in a while, we'll have them come forward and video record using something simple like a one take video to present their findings so that we can share their findings with them after the session is over. So not only can we provide them with our videos of all the lecture content, but we can provide them with their videos as well, their creations from the day. So let's look at these data side by side to discover how it's more efficient, why it's more efficient, and how it's more effective. Well, it's more efficient because we know that it takes about three times as long to present information in a professional development session live than via video. So by creating our lecture content, our direct instruction content ahead of time and playing it in the classroom, it's much more efficient. Again, for every minute of video content that we are presenting, it would have taken about three minutes to present that same information live. So we're buying efficiency by creating videos ahead of time and showing them in the classroom. Now, again, we have much less direct instruction because we're using videos. We still have time for directions. You'll see small group activity greatly rise. Again, large group activity a little bit more than in the original session. And then we have artifact creation and review. Now, 
It's more efficient, again, because of the videos, but it's more effective because we're using most of our, the, the brunt of our time in the professional development session, challenging participants to talk to one another, to come up with strategies, to collaborate, and that's much more effective for their learning, and it's much more effective for actual change, that if we challenge them to constantly be struggling throughout this day to figure out how to make it work in their classroom, they will actually figure out ways of making it work and and cause real change the next day.